Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting homemade exponential equation. We have x to the power x equals e to the power negative pi plus i ln 4, and we're going to be looking for x values. So let's go ahead and use Euler's formula for this problem first. So when you have something like e to the power a plus bi, you could also call this x a plus bi, you can basically separate it into two pieces, e to the a times e to the bi. And then you can go ahead and split it up because e to the a, obviously a and b are real numbers. We can basically write this as e to the a times cosine b plus i sine b using Euler's formula. Remember Euler's formula gives us something like this, e to the power i alpha is equal to cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. So in this case, b happens to be the angle or the argument. Okay, so is this going to help us? If we set it equal to this, let's see, x to the x equals e to the a times cosine b plus i sine b. So how do you solve for x from here, right? That's going to be a little complicated. So instead of doing that, we're going to do something different. We're going to take this e to the power a plus b i and then turn it into a nicer form. Uh, again, by using Euler's formula, but we're going to manipulate this a little bit. So here's how it goes. We have e to the power negative pi plus i times ln 4. In this case, this happens to be our a and this happens to be our b. Okay? Now, we can go ahead and separate this, basically. We can split it up into e to the power negative i times e to the power i times ln 4. Here's where the trick comes in. First of all, we can write this i as an exponent, as you know, properties of logs. By the way, this in this case, it will be uh, the log or ln of a real number. So we can go ahead and move this i and make it an exponent. So we can kind of write this as e to the power negative pi times e to the power ln 4 to the power i. Make sense? Cool. Now, e to the power ln something, as you know, is something. So it's like e to the power ln something is something. So, in other words, these two kind of cancel out. This gives us the following. And let's go ahead and write this first. 4 to the power i, because this is our something, times e to the power negative pi. So far, this is what x to the power x equals. But I'm going to manipulate this a little bit and then eventually set it equal to x to the power x. Okay? So, let's see how this goes. First of all, e to the power negative pi should be somewhat familiar to you. If you remember once, uh, I don't know when, but it was a while ago, we, I made a video on a similar equation, but it was, I think, e to the power negative pi over 2. So this came up before, and if you go ahead and take a look at it, uh, you'll see that video right here. Anyways, so let's go ahead and see what we can do. First of all, pi is negative. So, I mean, not pi, it's negative pi. So, we can write this as, what can I replace negative 1 with? I squared, right? Since we're dealing with complex values here, let's go ahead and write this as follows. I'm going to write the negative 1 as I squared, so this is going to become e to the power I squared pi. Make sense? I squared equals negative 1, so this is equivalent to negative pi. But why are we doing this? Here's our goal. We want to write this as e to the power i something, right? We don't have an i here. So in order to be able to introduce the i, I do need i squared. But I got i squared, so this means i squared is basically i times i. So if something was raised to the power i squared, I can basically think of it as, I don't know why that's happening. Great. So I can basically think of that as e to the power i squared is e to the power i to the power i. Does that make sense? So, this is the i that I need inside. So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's write this as e to the power i pi, and I'm going to raise it to the power i. But, this brings in some problems. And what are those problems? Well, this becomes e to the power i pi. What is e to the power i pi? Think about it. It is the complex number whose argument is pi, so that's going to be this one, and it's our, obviously its modulus is 1. So we're talking about a negative 1 here. But I don't want a negative 1 at the base. 
I do want something that will go along with the 4 because we have a 4 here. Notice that. So let's go ahead and do this instead. Instead of writing it as that way, we can write it as e to the power i pi over 2 and then raise it to the power 2i. And th there's something very cool about it because e to the power i pi over 2 is i. Take a look at it on the coordinate system. So it's going to be i and then we're going to raise it to the power 2i. We're almost there. But I just need to do a little bit of work on the 4. 4 is 2 squared, so we can write it as 2 squared to the power i. And then notice that the exponent is 2i here, and then it needs to be 2i here as well. So I can combine those into a single expression. That's what's so powerful about exponential rules. So now I can write this as 2 to the power 2i multiplied by i to the power 2i, which can be written as 2i to the power 2i. And yes, this is where the mathematics happens. And now we can set it equal to x to the power x. And guess what this means? This means x equals 2i. Well, at least x equals 2i will satisfy this equation. Now, are there any other solutions? Something to think about, right? A good question. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at if Wolfram Alpha can solve this problem successfully. We're going to compare our answer to Wolfram Alpha, and then we'll finish with that. Here we go. Can Wolfram Alpha solve this problem? And here's the result from Wolfram Alpha. As you can see, there are three different solutions with the complex branches, with the Lambert's W, so on and so forth. Anyways, this is what I got from there, and the rest is yours. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.